and I'm going to cook you guys a Japanese seafood salad. And I thought that would be perfect, given that this is an area known for incredible seafood. The first thing that we're going to do is make a rice cream. And what we've got here is this really awesome local rice from North Honshu Island, and they're famous for this particular rice. And it's a, a really beautiful, a slightly polished rice, and I think perfect for this creamy rice puree that we're gonna make. So in there goes 60 grams of rice, 350 grams of cream, 150 grams of milk, full fat, the good stuff. We've got 10 grams of sugar and 2.5 grams of salt. We put the uh, temperature onto 100 degrees, speed five for 20 minutes. Yeah, Aaron? Um, George, could, you could presumably make that just simmer it on the stove top, just give it a stir yep, every now and yep. again. And then right at the end, liquidise it. And then just blitz at the end. Yep. 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 Right, so the next texture and puree I want on this little seafood salad is uni. It's sea urchin. I mean, have a look at the way they prepare them here, beautifully in that packaging. That's super fresh and super, super delicious. Now, we've got to get the reduction going. So we've got 55 grams of shallot, some sliced garlic, five grams of that, 80 grams of sake, 60 grams of mirin. So I want to reduce that down a bit within the shallots just to really intensify that flavour. OK, so we've brought the mirin and the sake up to the boil. We've reduced that down in the shallots. It smells wonderful. At this point, I just turn it all off, OK? And what I want to do is just cool down that mixture, OK? At this point here, it's probably around 50, 50, 60 degrees. I take the uni and I just drop that in. An egg goes in. Four grams of soaked gelatine goes in, salt. And I, all I'm doing now is moving everything around and sort of bringing everything to the exact same temperature before I blend, before I add melted butter and before I cook. Now, let's uh, liquidise this. So 70 grams of melted butter. And I just gently drizzle that in. <sighs> OK. Right. Ben, can you come and help me? <laughs> Please? Yeah, I struggle. I, I, how do I use this thing? You hold the bag, I'll pour it in. Vacuum yep. and sealed. Yep. Done. Done. Fantastic. So that then now goes into the water bath. Yep. So 57 degrees for 20 minutes, right? Now, once that's cooked, take it out of the water bath and chill it straight away. Thank you, mate. OK, so our seafood salad is starting to come together. Next bit is we need to turn some daikon. OK, this is a cool machine. They sell them everywhere here. And this is one big daikon. <laughs> <laughs> Onto the machine like this. And what we end up with are these cool sheets, yeah? OK, now. I want to create these little inverted rigatonis that's going to fill up that hole inside of that cutter. OK. Ruler. Yeah. So what I want to do is cut the strips into two and a half centimetre width, and then we cut the strips into six centimetre lengths. And then you take a steel cling film. You basically cover the outside of the steel because I'm going to use this to wrap these little rigatonis. And what I want it to do is stick together. There's one. So we keep going, going, going until it's full. And the next thing's what I'm going to show you how to dress it. OK, guys, so we've made our rice cream. We've made our uni parfait. 
All right, we've set that aside in piping bags. All right, that looks absolutely fantastic. I've also made a uh, mushroom ketchup. This is going to add some real sort of oomph, some real flavour, some guts. All right, so we've got three different purees, same texture, but different flavours. OK, now we need to start building this seafood salad up with some, a bit more substance. We've got these beautiful crab legs, local, again, delicious, simply being steamed off and picked out of the shell. I've got some of the roasted rice tea, yeah, which is fantastic. I've got some shiso that I've just dipped in a very, very light sugar syrup and dehydrated, OK, to get these beautiful little chips. The most amazing tomatoes. We just bruised them slightly in a dehydrator to intensify that flavour. I mean, these are incredible. I've got some uh, flying fish rope. I've got some of these little enoki mushrooms, these gold top ones, that I've just steeped them in a little bit of ponzu, some soy sauce, just to give them a little bit of flavour. Right, let's start to put this together. First thing I do is I'm going to pipe all those rigatonis. OK, now, we can take the ring off gently. So these beautiful little mushrooms, some crab, just, you know, doesn't need to be dressed because we've got that beautiful dressing underneath. All right, our little tomatoes. Right, I just want to put one uni on there, just to represent the parfait. Flying fish row. So our little sort of dehydrated and slightly crystallised shiso leaf. Some of that roasted rice tea. And this will add another little depth of flavour. Fresh wasabi. We're in Japan, why not? And I'm just going to pop a few little drops of that onto the salad. And guys, that's my Japanese-inspired seafood salad. Who wants the taste? Aaron, Ben, come on. I don't even want to break it up. It looks like it. <laughs> come on, get in there. Everything's so rich and creamy, and then the daikon, like, just it's so nice. Yeah, it's crisp and crunchy because uh, we haven't, you know, salted it or washed it. It's, it's kept its real vibrance. Happy? Happy. Yeah, delicious. Baguette. Brilliant, guys. Back to your seats. Thank you, George. Right, guys, so you're done with me now. I want you to head out there because Matt's waiting for you, and he's going to show you a little slice of home. Ooh. Off you go. Thanks, George. Thanks, guys. Well, welcome to my segment of Masterclass, and I'm going to make three very simple country slices. The date rice bubble slice, the bus driver's mother-in-law slice, and Amanda's slice. My thinking was, you've been in Japan for a week, you've eaten tempura, ramen, and it's coming out of your ears. And about now, you just want a bit of taste of home. And I think there's nothing more Australian, nothing more taste at home than country slices. The first slice we're going to start with is the date rice bubble slice. OK, so I've melted down very slowly on a low heat, 125 grams of butter, 120 grams of chopped dates, and 90 grams of brown sugar. So the idea is you just want it to get this lovely, fudgy consistency. And then this is traditional, old-fashioned Australian rice bubbles. So we've got 120 grams of rice bubbles. We pour them into the fudgy mixture, and then we just uh... So um, when you line your slice tin, obviously leave some overhang, because it's going to make it easier for you to get the slice out of the tin. In goes our fudgy, datey goodness. And then we're just going to press these over. I've got some pink coconut here. Beautiful. Simple, packed, in the fridge. All right, that's slice number one, done. Now I'm going to move on to slice number two. So, 220 grams of white sugar, 150 grams of self-raising flour, 160 grams of sour cherries, um, dried, and then one egg, two heaped tablespoons of golden syrup. 
we mix this up until all the ingredients are combined. Now I'm going to pour in 100 grams of melted butter. This is the sort of slice that sits in the cupboard and calls your name. You go and have one bit, sneak it, and then you never leave the tin fully closed, because you know about three minutes later you're going to be going, yeah, OK, one more. Come on, Eliza. Please can you neatly spread that into all the corners yes. using these two very sticky <laughs> implements that I'm going to give you. Thank you. There you go, because you are a master. And I'm going to get on with the next slice. This is the bus driver's mother-in-law slice. We start with 90 grams of melted butter. Next up, 150 plain flour. 70 grams of ground almonds or almond meal. 120 grams of brown sugar. Stir it and combine. This is going to be a base on which you're going to put an almond butter and honey topping. So here we've got our, our crumb for the base, which is nicely, lightly combined into our baking tray. Spread out somewhat more quickly than Eliza's doing hers. Oh, you've left a big gap. There we go. How's that? that that's, that's pretty darn good. Great. Thank you very much indeed for your help. You've done a brilliant job. Thank you. Very good. Big hand of applause. <laughs> now, the Amanda slice goes in a preheated 180 degree oven and the base for the bus driver slice goes into the oven at 170. And I have, because I am a well-planned person, done one already. This is going to be nicely biscuity. It's been baked for 12 minutes, and we will now make our topping. We warm up a quarter of a cup of honey on a medium heat, a slightly indulgent 125 grams of butter. And then here we've got 220 grams of slivered almonds, two packets. Those almonds. We've got a lovely, toasty smell coming off there. And then all we're going to do with this is slather generously over the top of that slice. So now this goes back in the oven. 15 minutes later, it's going to look, hopefully, like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some flake salt over the top. And finally, Amanda's slice has been in there a little bit longer, so 180 for 30 minutes. And this is one of these things, it, when it comes out of the oven, it just looks home-baked and, and it smells buttery, sweet, decadent. So there you go, three slices born in Australia. Simple.